guys, and welcome to another episode. This is Bob Bubblegum. Um, in uh, today's episode, I do realize that if you watched my history lesson about the 60s, it was kind of bad because I used the iPad and the mic was a bit fuzzy. So, since I, my computer is a bit fuzzy, I'm going to quickly show you this video about the 60s and be better than the other one. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all later. Hello there guys, and welcome to another episode. And in today's episode, I've been requested to talk about the 60s, or also known as the 1960s. There are many things that are in the 60s that are just so dang cool. Yes, the 60s. It was the age of the youth. Um... Around 70 million children became teenagers and young adults, and also during the 60s, the creator of Mickey Mouse of Walt Disney's World has died of cancer on December 15, 1966. And it was also the age of when the Berlin Wall was built. And this was also the age of Martin Luther King got assassinated, and JFK shot... President Kennedy. So many people ask me, what do people wear during the 60s? How did they look and what did they eat? Well, you came to the right place. I will tell you everything about the 60s. Alright, now we're going to be talking about the fashion. Uh, so, first things first, we are going to talk about the fashion of what people wore during the 60s. For most people, they wore tie-dye shirts, and I know tie-dye spelled wrong. They wore headbands and they showed you lots of bright colors, and people had really long hair and big beards during the 60s. Well, for women, they only wore really short skirts. However, men wore tunics and capes. For the accessories that are popular for women, they include sunglasses, and the reason they wore these is because they protect their eyes from the sun of unique styles. They also wore hats, but they were designed with cool details with flowers, lace, veils, and luxurious embellishments and trim. For the accessories for men, the popular accessories, they have long tie-dye pants, they have flares, um, they have the club slash rave, which is the glasses, and they also wore the disco shirts. So basically during this age period, it was basically the age of the hippies. Next, we're going to be talking about the hairstyles. And the popular hairstyle for the men is called the mop top. It's basically like a haircut. And I know it kind of looks like a Justin Bieber haircut, but it's not like a Justin Bieber haircut. And this guy looks like Harry Potter. So, this is what it looks like. It There's no other way I can describe it, but it looks sort of like the Bieber Bowl. And then for the popular accessory, for not the accessory, for the um, the popular hairstyle for the women is called the Jackie O style, and I know you cannot see that picture as well, so I'm going to quickly pull up a clip and I'm going to show you what it is. Ah, here we go. It would be something like this, the little curls in the back. And uh, here's another picture of what it looks like. See those curls in the back? This is the popular hairstyle for the women. It's the Jackie O style. And, ooh, this is a beautiful picture of the Jackie O style. Alright, it's now loading. Moving on. Okay, our next topic is music and one of the favorite popular uh, bands is the Beatles, and in the 1960s, they wrote Let It Be by the Beatles, so I'm going to quickly just play a clip of the Let It Be song. Hope you guys enjoy. Words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. Our next song is Hey Jude in 1968. I could not find... Well, actually, I did find the Beatles version of Let It Be, but 
When I made my video, I could not find it, so it had the Glee's cover of version. So, wait. Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, I could not find it, so you're gonna be hearing the Glee's cover of Let It- or not Let It Be, uh, Hey Jude in 1968. Alright, enough of that, and I do have one more. It is also a Beatles uh, song. I just love the Beatles so much. So, the next song is going to be Yesterday, which is also in the 1960s. So, enjoy this quick clip of Yesterday. Oh, sorry. It's movie time. One of my favorite movies, uh, well, it's, uh, one of the favorite movies in the 1960s is called Fisco in 1960. Okay, so, there's actually a Fisco in this clip, so, I hope you guys don't freak out at all. Just, just watch it. Alright, this part might freak out some people, so... Hope you guys enjoy! <laughs> and she dies! Just kidding, she does not die. I was just fooling with you. Okay! Uh, the next movie is, uh, Doctor Strangelove in 1964. Is down to a safe level after two weeks. You've obviously never heard of Cabal Thorium G. Well, what about it? Cabal Thorium G has a radioactive half-life of 93 years. If you take, say, 50 H-bombs in the 100 megaton range and jacket them with Cabal Thorium G, when they are exploded, they will produce a doomsday shroud, a lethal cloud of radioactivity which will encircle the Earth for 93 years. Oh, what a load of commie bull. I mean, after all. Afraid I don't understand something, Alexei. Is the Premier threatening to explode this if our planes carry out their attack? Okay, so, quickly, before I continue, in this part, they are talking about a some sort of doomsday machine. So, I hope it will give you a better idea of what is happening in this clip. No, sir. 
It is not a thing a sane man would do. The doomsday machine is designed to trigger itself automatically. But surely you can disarm it somehow? No. It is designed to explode if any attempt is ever made to untrigger it. Automatically? Ah, it's an obvious comic trick, Mr. President. We're wasting valuable time. Look at the big boy. They're getting ready to clobber us. But this is absolute madness, Ambassador. Why should you build such a thing? There were those of us who fought against it. But in the end, we could not keep up with the expense involved in the arms race, the space race, and the peace race. And at the same time, our people grumbled for more nylons and washing machines. Our doomsday scheme cost us just a small fraction of what we've been spending on defense in a single year. But the deciding factor was when we learned that your country was working along similar lines, and we were afraid of a doomsday gap. This is preposterous. I've never approved of anything like that. Granted me... And then some handicapped person starts talking about the doomsday machine. Last year, a study of this project by the Blend Corporation. Based on the findings of the report, my conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent for reasons which at this moment must be all too obvious. Then you mean it is possible for them to have built such a thing? Mr. President, the technology required is easily within the means of even the smallest nuclear power. It requires only the will to do so. But how is it possible for this thing to be triggered automatically and at the same time impossible to untrigger? Mr. President, it is not only possible, it is essential. That is the whole idea of this machine, you know. Deterrence is the art of producing in the mind of the enemy the fear to attack. And so, because of the automated and irrevocable decision-making process which rules out human meddling, the doomsday machine is terrifying. It's simple to understand. And, the and then, our final clip movie, and then we can move on to our next topic, is uh, 2001 A Space Od Odyssey, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it was also in 1968. So, hope you enjoy this quick clip. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, sorry, my mic was off. Um, try sleeping for this. See what happens. And now we're going to be talking about our popular sports. I forgot to mention that women not only wear skirts, so sorry to cause confusion, but they also wore retro shirts. It's Lucky Bun and uh, Up shirt, and they do appear to be really classy. And yes, Kennedy was shot. He was not slaughtered, so... Pardon me for my grammars in this video, and this was actually my second time using my microphone in my videos since my microphone was broken. And now, introducing the sports in the 60s. Okay, so sports in the 60s include as follows. Um, Australian football, uh, baseball, boxing, that guy's taking it to the punch, and Canadian football. Eh? Hope you guys are feeling hungry. Now let's look at our popular foods in the 60s. Uh, hope this video scoops you up for a good appetite. So first off we have Lipton onion soup and dip. Uh, this yummy stuff. And then desserts and salads encased in a gelatin. And meatballs with a uh, uh, jelly. Well actually... There is such thing as meatballs and jelly. You just gotta go to Google, type in meatballs with jelly, and there should be many recipes of what meatballs and jelly are. And yeah, there's so many recipes. Just look at all these delicious foods. And then our popular restaurants in the 60s as follows. We got JoJo. We got 
Prime Mola, uh, Moxai Mahal, and Lacluse. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not really sure. This is the. This is only the inside, insides of the restaurants, and they do look really luxurious. And now we're going to our next topic. Okay, uh, next topic, precedents that were in the 60s uh, includes as follows. We got John F. Kennedy, we have President Nixon, and I think this is how old he was during the time. Oh, he looks pretty older. Um, we got Eisenhower, um, I don't think it was 34, and uh, President Johnson, and these were all the presidents during the 60s. And now, I will read you a quick political scandal that happened in the 60s. This is Marlon Monroe. She was perhaps the most dark-crossed lover in the history. On one hand was her dazzling success in Tinseltown, and on the other, her volatile and highly secret relationships with the much-married president of the United States, States and his brother. Monroe's name was linked to both John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy. Although many in the political circles knew of the affairs, and they were carefully hushed up so that the public had no clear facts to chew on. Monroe, however, was becoming a public embarrassment and had even threatened to go public about the president's infidelities. But her plans were short-lived as she was found dead in her home under mysterious circumstances. Although official reports say she committed suicide, there have always been rumors that the Kennedys had her quote, removed, unquote, to protect their political image. The truth still remains elusive. And the North Vietnamese Tet Offensive convinced many people that the Vietnam War would be impossible to win. There were two wars, uh, the Vietnam War, which is during the Cold War, and the Bay of Pigs invasion. And I think that was in 1960. I couldn't remember the date. And now we're going to quickly go to the technology in the 60s. First invention is the supercomputer. Um, something about the supercomputer, it helped many people across the world because without the supercomputer, um, well, let me rephrase that. If we didn't have the supercomputer today, we wouldn't be able to have better communication with other people around the world. And there was another invention that kind of had the exact same reason, and let me pull it up really quickly. We have the typewriter, which was also in the 60s, and once again, it helped many people out. What we have today is a lot of better communication. Now that we have keyboards in our system, we can send texts to anywhere we wanted in a blink of an eye because the internet however tr like uh, well let me put it to you this way internet is fast sometimes internet can be slow but it's pretty much fast and there's one more invention that i wanted to show you and then we're going to talk about the prices okay well it looks like my internet's down for the day um the last invention is the satellite and uh Oh, yep, my internet sound. So, the satellite helped many people out because without the satellite today, we wouldn't have power. Um, there wouldn't be no computers, no communication, and no cell phones. And I'm very glad that we had this today. Um, I think the... I couldn't remember, but it had something to do with the space station. So, yeah, since we don't have any internet, I have no idea why. We're going to be quickly talking about the the costs. So, <clears throat> the supercomputer would cost like around $8 million because it was brand new, but also the equipment that was needed to build was also expensive. So was the typewriter. 
it was like around that the price too but maybe a little bit lower since it was in the 60s because my father always told me that root beer floats only costed a nickel and the uh, supercomputer uh okay hold on the satellite no the supercomputer costed eight million dollars i don't remember what the satellite costed and um okay uh quickly we'll be talking about the food costs and there was an interesting website i wanted to show you but turns out i do not have my internet so so around in the 60s uh, the highest price for foods was 89 cents well the low price was like around like like nine cents to 25. so in the 60s you can get three apples for 49 cents per pound and that's really good that's really cheap so guys this is the end of my video um, I'm sorry that my internet went down, and once it comes back up, I will display the sites that were sorted. Okay, never mind. My internet just popped back up. Uh, this is the satellite in the 60s, and it looks pretty cool, actually. Um, the equipment that we used, that was used to build would probably make the cost expensive. And uh, there was... Uh, now I'm going to show you the list of foods that would that would cost in the 60s. Okay, so this is the cool website that I found all these foods in the 60s and per cost. So the apples were 49 cents per 3 pounds and it was in Wisconsin in 1963. Uh, bananas, 10 cents per pound in Wisconsin 1963, but only 19 cents for 2 pounds in Maryland in 1960. Carrots, 15 cents per pound in New Jersey in 1966. Um, ham, 30, 39 cents per pound in Wisconsin in 1963. So, uh, ground beef, 49, 45 cents per pound in Wisconsin in 1963. And it's all, it, it is also why a cheeseburger would cost 90, 99 cents at uh, McDonald's, I do believe. I don't remember, but let me put it to you this way. Ground beef, 45 cents. If you get a double cheeseburger, that's another 45 cents. So, basically, in the 60s, a hamburger costed a uh, dollar. And then we have large eggs for 45 cents per dozen, Wisconsin 1963. And these are all the sites that I used for this video. Alright guys, so I have to end my video here. Uh, I like to... Thank you a lot for checking out this video. Uh, once again, my channel name is Bob Bubblegum. If you want to click on the the channel area, I don't remember what it's called, but type in Bob Bubblegum on the YouTube page. There should be a picture of me wearing a blue shirt, and I am playing the computer. So, guys, hit that like video, and make sure to subscribe. I hope you all have a nice day, and once again, thank you for checking this out. I appreciate it. Um, have a good day.